Uh, hello, this is Tola Olubumi from uh, Trifo Productions, and uh, this is another um, Blender tutorial for beginners. I kind of noticed in my last uh, tutorial the uh, sound was kind of low, but uh, hopefully the sound will be up to standard uh, during this tutorial. Uh, but this tutorial we're going to talk about, um, oh, actually in the last tutorial we talked about adding meshes uh and uh scene manipulation and mesh mesh manipulation uh but in this this tutorial we're going to talk about and demonstrate also um uh joining meshes together and then adding color or texture uh to your mesh uh so once again you can just go to blender.org and you can open up the latest build which is 2.65 i think there's even a later one uh but yeah um if it's a later version or this version is still pretty much the same and I forgot to mention last time blender is free so you don't have to pay anything for it it's just a free and incredibly powerful CD animation uh, program so just open up blender and then we've already got our cube here and uh, now let's just lift that up you know it's all uh, hovering your cursor over the uh, axis this is the z-axis and holding down the uh, left mouse button you can drag it up and down on the axis as we, as we explained in the last lesson but uh, yeah this is uh, our, our cube our mesh here and let's go into the uh, front view by pressing 1 and uh, yeah let's zoom zoom out by uh, zoom out a little bit by scrolling down your mouse button and you can see you've got your cube here. And if you want to add, like we explained in the last uh, tutorial, just press Shift A to add a mesh. So Shift A as a mesh. Here's your your meshes here. And let's add a, a monkey head. Just uh, select monkey from the uh, pop-up menu. And there's your monkey. Uh, it's looking a little bit on the rough side. Let's zoom in uh, by scrolling up on our mouse mouse uh, scroll uh, scroll wheel. Hold down Shift and hold down your middle mouse scroll wheel to uh, uh, position it more in the center and scroll up again to zoom in and if you notice it's, it's looking a little bit on the rough side if you want to smooth out your monkey or whatever mesh you've got whether it's a monkey or a circle or a sphere or whatever it is all you have to do is go to your left hand side in your tool uh, bar and you'll see there are a lot of uh, options here and under shading uh, just click smooth and there you go, your monkey's now smooth. Uh, so we have the monkey head here, and we have the cube here. Let's uh, say so you want to join them together to make them one. You're like, well, what am I supposed to do uh, to join these two meshes together? All you have to do is select one item by uh, right-clicking on the item, or left-clicking, excuse me. Hold down shift, uh, sorry, hold down shift, right-click. You right-click on both, actually. You right click to select so hold down shift on one that's selecting one then hold down shift on the other one and then on your keyboard just press control J control J and now they've become one item and as you can see they're now one piece let's zoom out a little bit uh, so now you've got your monkey and your uh, cube joined together if you want to undo that uh, that process, just press Control Z. The number of times you've uh, done that in action to undo it, just press Control Z, and you've you've undone it. So you've got your monkey here, and then you've got your uh, your cube. And let's say you just want to change the color. You don't want the color to be gray. All you have to do is go over to your uh, these other selections on your the right side of your uh, workstation. You'll see different. Uh, options here at the top you got your camera uh, a circle with a sphere these are the world settings here and if you hover your mouse over any of these it'll tell you what these buttons are that's the world setting this is object uh, this is for the scene itself uh, but what not right now I want to just click on this little kind of bronze brown colored uh, emblem here uh, when, you, when you click on that it brings up this tab which is for materials and when you scroll down to the diffuse, which is uh, basically the color, you left click on that and it brings up a color wheel. And you can just simply change 
So you notice if you move this little dot around your color wheel, it changes the uh, color of your mesh. So that's how you can change the colors of, of anything you're working on. Um, the specularity, that aspect of it is when you have uh, maybe how it reflects in the sun, what color you want it to be. Usually what I try to do, I mean, if you want something, your, your, uh, your mesh to look like uh, a plastic toy like in Toy Story, if you notice, know this in, real, in, um, in this rally that we have right here, plastic toys have more of a white sheen or shine to it. So if you want your mesh or your whatever you're working on to look like, look like plastic, uh, you can keep it white. But what I usually do is I just take my specularity uh, color, which is that, and I just make it a little bit darker. You can uh, actually pick, uh, click on the co color clicker, picker there. You can actually bring it over to wherever you want on your mesh and change the specularity, and it, it'll show it'll show in the preview port there, and you'll see that your uh, specularity has changed to suit whatever you want it to to, to be. So usually for for myself when I make uh, human characters or I make uh, animals, I try to make the specularity as close or darker than the color that uh, the animal or the person is and that gives it a more realistic look. So yeah, so here we've uh, gone through uh, what we wanted to achieve here which was joining two meshes together and changing the color. Uh, we can go a step further and change the texture of um, your mesh. Uh, and to do that, you just go over to this uh, checkerboard here, which is textures. You click on that. Uh, then it'll have the word text, which is short for texture, checked because you want to add a texture to your mesh. If you don't just want to, I don't know, put stripes on it or put polka dots or put a skin texture on your mesh, this is the way to do it. You just scroll uh, down. You can, let's uh, collapse some of these menus here. Uh, you scroll down to type and you click on the directional arrow and then you click on image or movie. Uh, the preview is black because we haven't chosen any kind of, kind of texture yet. But to see uh, what the texture looks like by itself and also on your object, you click both. You can choose any of these options to the right here to preview what your mesh looks like when it's stretched over an object. The best one to use usually when it comes to um, making or, or working on a uh, you know person or animal is the the monkey. <clears throat> the reason being is you can see how the mesh stretches over each aspect of these curves here on the monkey's ears or on the around the eyes or around the mouth. So if it's too stretchy, you'll know you'll see it in the preview before you actually see it in your actual mesh. <coughs> and so after you've uh, set this up, go down to image and click on open. I've got a lot of images stored on the external hard drive, which is on my K drive. <coughs> and um, it'll say blender, uh, let me see, blender textures. That's how I've labeled mine. <coughs> and another thing you can note with your selections here, I mean, if you want to see what the selections look like, just go go up to your uh, this top menu bar here and click on these four little, uh, this section of four little uh, square textures. And Blender will actually show you <coughs> what's in your file, give you an image of it. Uh, let's say we wanted to have, like, I guess this, like, uh, grain and blue-yellow striped texture on our uh, monkey uh mesh let's click on that and then click on open image and then you can see that is previewed here uh, with all the stretches it's not previewed in your workstation just yet uh, to see it in your workstation what you could do uh, is go down to the bottom of your, of your workstation and then click on this little uh, icon here that's what I was trying to see initially not emblem but icon click on that and it says texture click on texture and it's supposed to actually show you um, this texture here but uh, due to the fact we've actually given it a color in the uh, in the material tab the material tab dominates 
uh, texture previews in your workstations. That's that's why you can't see it. But in order to see it, you just uh, press F12 on your uh, keypad, and you've got you've got that part up. I have to position the camera a little bit better there. Let me uh, go back and do that. You press Escape to get out of that. So let's find our camera. Uh, press zero to get it into camera view and it automatically puts you in the camera so you just click on your camera press G for grab on your keyboard and pull your camera up and let's also move our light source let's uh, right click on our lamp here and then press uh, 7 on your number keypad 7 and let's grab our light and place it more in front of our uh, mesh here press G on your keypad and move it forward. You can see. You can see this. I, I kind of like the preview of the textures, um, texture scene, so to speak, in your uh, workstation because it gives you a uh, real-time view of you know what's going on when it comes to moving lights around. As you can tell, so we're going to put our light in front of our um, in front of our uh, mesh here. Let's let's left-click that to, to uh, drop the light there, and then our preview. If, in order for to uh, preview in a pop-up window, as opposed to uh, appearing in this uh, workstation you go to this icon which is the camera which is the render uh, tab click on that and go to display which is under the render option there and you click on that on the arrow and you want it to appear in a new window you can have it keep it in the uh, UI or new window image editor or a full screen I like to use a new window that way you don't have to you keep uh, pressing escape in order to get out of the uh, the preview but now that that's set up <coughs> Let's uh, press F12 again and see what uh, see what we can see. And there we go. That's uh, the textures that we've applied to the monkey. Uh, it looks a little rougher. Uh, the monkey does, but there's a way that we can fix that. Um, let's uh, add one more light source. Let's let's uh, exit out of this by pressing X. Uh, let's add another light source by pressing. Uh, Shift A on your keyboard. From the options, you've got um, let me see lamp here. And let's add a sun because uh, that's pretty bright. So let's add on add sun there, and let's move it on the um, on the uh, axes there. Press three for the right uh, right perspective, and let's tilt our sun so that it actually faces the back of the monkey's head to actually light the scene a little bit better. Let's press R on a keyboard that rotates, and there we go. Uh, let's press F12 again to get a preview, a better lit uh, preview of our monkey. F12. Okay. See, so see, we can now see that the texture we applied, it's uh, it's it's stretched over the monkey. But this is there's a better way to actually apply uh, textures. But once again, this is just a beginner's lesson on applying textures, textures so you can just get familiar with it. Uh, let's escape out of that. Press X. And let's select our monkey again. Uh, press 1 on your key keyboard, number keyboard pad. Press 1 for the front view. And let's go to uh, the modifier tab. This is more a bit more of a uh, more advanced lesson. Uh, just a pre preview of our future lesson let's press on the modifier which is this little wrench uh, icon and let's click on that and let's you'll see add modifier and click on the arrows and then under uh, generate let's click on subdivision surface and it automatically smooths out the monkey and also turns our cube into a bit of a I think this is a, is a hexagon but let's preview that again press F12 and there you go you have a smoother looking monkey and uh, more of a ball shaped um, uh, cube as opposed to a square shaped cube if, if you can say that. Uh, that's what the subdivision modifier does. It, it smooths out the vertices on your mesh to make it look better, uh, make it look smoother and gives it a more pleasant uh, appearance. But uh, yeah, so we've gone over adding meshes to um, our uh, workstation and we've gone over adding color to our items there and also adding uh, textures 
And you might be thinking, well, we've added this color to it. But every time we press F12, the only thing that shows up is the texture. Well, if you want to see the color with your texture, uh, ha having your mesh selected, go back to uh, your material tab first. You have to click on material tab before you can click on the texture tab. Uh, that's one thing I didn't really know before. I would always click on the texture tab first and nothing would come up. And that's just how Blender is rigged. Uh, for example, if I, if I click on the, oh, okay, it's doing it now. Okay, so yeah, I guess they, they fixed that because before, you, if you clicked on the texture tab, nothing would come up when you're with your mesh select you have to click on the material tab first and then the texture tab but they've uh, remedied that okay in order to see the color with your texture uh, all you have to do is go down scroll down to your um your blend mode uh people who are familiar with photoshop can or if you know with this term blending your two elements together instead of mix you click on uh let me see multiply if you scroll up now, the color that we added in the material tab, which is that purplish pink, has now mended with the with this texture. Let's press F12. And there you go. Now you've got your, your color that you've added with your texture. And now you have a you know textured colored monkey slash ball thing here. So yeah. Um as I mentioned, I'm going to try to keep these tutorials uh, around 10 minutes. But yeah, this is uh, Tola from uh, Trifo Productions with uh, this uh, second tutorial uh, for beginners, of course. And uh, hope to see you uh, uh, next time around. All right, uh, have a great day. All right, bye.